Little Death is the directorial feature debut from Jack Baker. He is a graduate from USC film program and he launched his own production company, Psycho Films. He's actually had quite a successful career to this date as a director of music videos, creating videos for some of the world's top artists, including Kendrick Lamar, Doja Cat, and even Sir Paul McCartney. He's been working on this project essentially over the course of the last nine years. He actually created a short film um, under a very similar title, albeit in French, as almost a proof of concept to see if this film could work. It is a bold take, mostly in its style and approach, but it was picked up by Darren Aronofsky as a lead producer and ultimately made its way to Sundance. This film is essentially an exploration of crisis. It's split into two parts and we explore different characters and how they cope or do not cope with the different crises that they're facing. It may be a crisis of career or self-worth. It might be a crisis of addiction or mental health. But what Jack Beggard attempts to do here is show how all of these crises, both internal and external, are connected to what it means to be human. He sets this film in LA and shows us two very different parts of Los Angeles. He shows us a little bit of the glitz and glam juxtaposed next to the LA underbelly. I had the chance to chat with Jack before the premiere, and it's clear that he's a man with a vision. It's clear that he has something in his mind and he is going to express it on the screen and nothing's going to stop him. The movie, as I mentioned, is split into two parts. One part shot digitally, one part shot on film. And the visual language of these two parts could not be more different. The first half is a fully surreal examination of our first protagonist, David Schwimmer's inner life. And I have to mention, David Schwimmer is phenomenal here. People forget that he comes from a theater background. He's a very trained actor, and he puts forward a very, very strong performance. We see him as a screenwriter who is potentially on the verge of a breakthrough, but is also on the verge of collapse. And as we're transported into his mind, Beggar actually uses AI to generate these surreal images of David in different surroundings, almost melting at times, a postmodernist take on some surreal art. And to me, it was captivating. The moments that I enjoyed the most were these moments of surrealism, the use of all of these different visual elements. In my discussion with uh, director Jack Baggert, he, in his own words, coined it a visual soup. He just threw in all of the ingredients and took us on a journey. The second half of the film centers on Dominic Fike, who is an addict, who is struggling to find his place in the world. He wants to open up a taco truck business, but doesn't necessarily have the tools to do so. A very different crisis from David Schwimmer as a screenwriter with an already successful television show his character has. But they're both struggling to find their identity. Now, as I mentioned, these two parts are very distinct. And a lot of people have spoken that this kind of lacks a little bit of continuity, um, which, is, which is fair. In fact, there's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek 
uh, piece of dialogue early in the film where David Schwimmer is at dinner with some friends and one of his friends mentions this idea that in film you can only have one hero. You can only have one protagonist. And Jack obviously puts that piece of dialogue in to challenge the viewer as we switch protagonists. We switch heroes halfway through the journey. For me personally, I wanted a little bit more time with David Schwimmer. I wanted a little bit more time with his character, and it did feel slightly disjointed. The second half, again, as I mentioned, starred Dominic Fike and some other younger actors. There were moments that were hilarious, for sure, but I never found myself fully buying into the pain and to the struggle that they were experiencing. All of this being said, it is a fascinating visual journey, and I'm confident that Jack Beggart, if he continues to strive towards what he sees in his mind, his vision is purely unique. I don't think that there's anyone else right now who is seeing things the way that he is seeing them, and while Little Death may not be perfect, it represents a glimpse into the future of filmmaking.